Hey guys, my name is Matt Johnson, and today I want to share with you how I color correct and color grade my Mavic Pro video footage. Yes, it's finally here. I'm so glad to finally share with you my color grading video. I know a ton of you have been asking me to make this video for a while now, so I'm glad that I finally had time to make it and share it with you. That said, if this is my first video that you're watching, I actually made an entire previous video detailing all of my video settings that I use whenever I'm filming with the Mavic. So picture profile, gimbal speed, indie filters, every single video setting that you could possibly need to film beautiful cinematic imagery with your Mavic. I have detailed that in a previous video, which I will link to in the corner and down in the description. And I would highly recommend watching that because the video that I'm going to be color correcting and color grading is one that I shot using those video settings. So I'd highly recommend watching that video, going out and shooting some video in those settings, and then following along with me. So that way you're not like, man, this looks really flat, this looks weird, because I was using my settings. Also, I want to give a plug to another video that I made, and that is about basic color grading. And I would highly recommend you watch that too, because there are a lot of settings that I'm going to skip over in this video, because I feel like I've already explained them in that video. So you can watch that video to get the basics. This is slightly more advanced, and that way you will be able to keep up with me as I go. Cool, got it? All right, let's jump right into editing. Okay guys, welcome to Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2017. I'm gonna go up here to the About page so you can see which version I'm using. I'm using the 2017.1.2 release, so if yours looks slightly different, it's probably because you're using a different release, but don't sweat it, this should work for every version after I wanna say CC 2017. So hopefully that'll be okay. All right, so I've already imported footage into my timeline. This is a video clip that I shot in Iceland at 30 frames per second, conformed to 24 frames per second. And let's pretend that I've already edited this. So let's pretend this is like some beautiful video that I've shot, even though it's just one clip. And it's this really pretty shot of the cliffs with the drone flying alongside them. There's some birds flying around, gorgeous totally pretty, but as you can see, there is no color correction or grading applied. This is just straight from the camera. This is in D-Log at zero comma negative one comma negative one. So if you are shooting something different, yours might look slightly different, but regardless, this has not been color corrected or graded in any way. But let's change that and color correct now. So we're gonna scroll through the video here till we find a spot. I feel like this spot right here is good because we're getting a nice range of highlights. We get some shadows over here. This is a nice shot to start with our color correction. Now let's start color correcting. We're gonna select our clip first so it is highlighted. We're gonna make sure that we're in the color tab up here at the top. And we're gonna make sure that the Lumetri color panel is visible. And we're gonna first click on curves. And this brings up the curves set of tools. And what we're gonna do first that I like to do before I do any other color correction or color grading, I like to bring my video clip back to the Rec. 709 color space. That means I want it to be as contrasty and as saturated as what you would normally see on TV. Because we shot this in a log format, everything is really flat and has a lot of room for grading, but this is not something that you would necessarily want to show someone if you were like, here, watch this beautiful video I shot, because it looks really kind of flat and gross. So we are going to bring the contrast and the saturation back into this image. And the best way to do that is by using the curves tool. The other window that I also want to have open is Lumetri Scopes. And I have mine set to the Parade RGB, which as you can see, it makes this weird sort of red, green, and blue. I don't know exactly what this looks like, some sort of modern art piece or something like that. But what this tool allows you to see is how bright and how dark your entire image is broken up into the red, green, and blue color channels. So as you can see here, all of my colors and brightness are in the middle of the video. Everything ends at about 90 and at about 10. There's a little bit underneath 10, but as you can see, it is mostly squished here in the middle because it is a log profile. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna stretch out these colors so that they go down to zero and they go up to almost 100. And we're gonna do that by adjusting our curves. So I'm gonna come over here and start adjusting curves, which I explain how to use in my other color grading video. So please watch that video so you understand what I'm doing here. First, we're gonna click on a shadowy area and we're gonna start bringing things down and watch our scope. See how that's immediately bringing the scopes down pretty darn dark and it's also making our image darker. And this is adjusting our shadows and I find that that looks pretty good as far as my shadows go. Things are almost down to zero, not quite, but I think that looks really good for a start. Next, we're gonna go over here to our highlights on the right side, or we're gonna click and make a new point, and we're gonna start dragging up. And you're gonna see that that starts adjusting the brightest parts of our image and starts bringing those scopes up 
higher and higher. So I'm kind of keeping an eye on both of these here and I'm looking at the image and I'm saying that looks really bright now and that's looking really good. So as you can see, my scopes are almost stretched out to 100 and now this part is significantly more stretched out than it was before and our image is now looking significantly more contrasty. The blacks are black, the whites are starting to be more white, but we're not getting any overexposure, which is something that I want to avoid. Once that is done, I like to add some saturation. So let's go up here to the basic correction tab and go down here to the saturation slider. This is just the easiest way to do it. There are tons of other ways to do it, but I find this is one of the easiest ways. And we're gonna start bringing up the saturation slowly up to about 120, I'd say. Because if you go any higher, it starts getting like super green and super blue and it looks like really oddly unnatural. So I find even like 120, especially considering this is Iceland and everything's kind of gray and flat anyways, I find that 120 looks good. Maybe later on though, if you're doing something, maybe you want to boost up to 130 or 140, that's fine. But for me, 120 is pretty darn good for D-Log. And as you can see, that has now introduced a lot more saturation. Specifically, this moss is now greener, as you can see. This has more color, the sky has more color, the grass down here has more color. Everything is just more saturated and more contrasty than it was before. And that is looking really good. At this point, we would want to apply some color corrections to this image. And as you can see, it looks pretty darn good because I had the white balance nearly nailed, I had the exposure nearly nailed when I was flying. So there are not a ton of changes that need to be made because I nearly nailed this perfectly in camera. One thing that I want to tweak here a little bit is that as you can see here in the mid-tones, they're a little blue, especially as you get farther off into the distance, which is part of the haze, but I feel like this whole image is skewing a little more blue than I want it to. So we're gonna go down here to the color wheels, and since this is mostly in the mid-tones that I'm seeing a bit of this blue, I'm gonna go over here to the mid-tones color wheel, and I'm gonna select it and start ever so subtly dragging up and to the left into the oranges and as you can see on the scopes the colors the red green blue are actually adjusting as i do this here and you're going to see that that blue tinge is being taken off and now things are looking a little more natural here now we're getting a more na yellow naturally colored grass the green is starting to look a little too yellow though so i'm going to go over here and tweak this down ever so slightly everything whenever you're color grading is super small movements you don't want to go crazy but as far as that image goes, I'm really happy with how that looks now. I think that looks great. And I don't really think that I need to make any more color corrections at this point. This image as it is, is color corrected. And if you wanted to stop right here and you were saying, all right, I'm ready to upload this thing, you hit play, that looks really good in my opinion. I think that looks really great. One thing I want you to be aware of whenever you're color grading, and something that I've noticed in a lot of DJI drones whenever I've been coloring them, and that is that in general, the camera tends to shift a little toward magenta. If you look over here on the color wheel, you have all of your different colors, and up on the right here is the magenta color. It's between red and purple. It's kind of this sickly red purple color that can be affecting the mid-tones of your image. And because I nailed the white balance and because I'm using their latest color science with their D-Log, I'm not noticing it as much now, but if you are shooting in D-Cinelike, if you're shooting in the normal picture profile, any other picture profile, you definitely may notice a magenta shift to your images. And so the way that I correct that is that I select the color wheel here and I'm bringing it down away in the complementary color direction away from magenta more towards the green. And as you can see here, it kind of makes this gross Wizard of Oz look here, which we're not going for with this image because I had already had the color correct. But we'll just control Z here and go back to how it was. But whenever I have been shooting in other picture profiles, I found that there is definitely a magenta shift, especially in the mid-tones. And by bringing that mid-tone color down into the greens a little bit, that is going to fix that for you. So I would highly recommend doing that if you are noticing a magenta shift in your images, just something I want you to be aware of. Now let's talk about color grading. Color grading is the art of manipulating the color, contrast, saturation, hue, vibrance, all of the aspects that go into creating your film to manipulate and change your viewer's emotions and to create a different feeling for your film by changing the colors. As an example, let's say our film is a sad film and that our main character is traveling to Iceland to have a Viking funeral for her father, complete with the boat being pushed out and then they launch the arrow and it lights the boat on fire and it burns up, which is honestly the coolest way to have a funeral ever and I would love to have that happen. Remember this YouTube, when I die, do that for me, thank you. 
But as an example here, let's go over here to our shadows and let's make this more of a darker, sadder image. So let's go over here to the midtones first and we're gonna go from the warmer colors that we were doing down colder, dun dun dun. Not too cold, you never wanna go too extreme. Like you go down here, it's like, oh, it's kind of purple. I don't know how I feel about that. But just a little colder. And we'll go over to the shadows and we'll do the same. Down, colder, and then the shadows are still a little bright. So we're gonna go over here to the contrast and brightness for the shadows. And we're gonna drag that down. And suddenly, things are looking significantly darker and more foreboding than they were before. Suddenly it's like, oh man, Iceland, I don't know if I wanna visit there. Kinda of sad looking. You see how quickly and easily your emotions are changed just by doing those simple things. Now let's go back here, back to as it was, and let's make this a happier film, for example. Let's say that we're just on a family vacation to Iceland. Maybe instead of going down to the blues, we want this to be a happier film, so we're gonna to go to our mid-tones and we're gonna start bringing those up a little bit higher, not too extreme, because you do not want to immediately just have everything looking orange and it looks really weird. But maybe we go a little higher than we were before, and then we'll go over here to the highlights, and we're gonna bring up the highlights a little more too, which is going to affect the brightest parts of our image. So the sky here, these clouds that are white, are gonna start becoming a little more yellow and orange. And what that is gonna mimic is sunlight. So as you can see here, it's gotten a little bit too yellow for my taste here, so we're gonna bring it over to the red a little bit and down a little bit. But suddenly, this is looking more like a happier travel film. Maybe something where we're on a fun trip and we're like, look at this, Iceland's beautiful, I love it. You see the extreme range of colors and emotions that you can have just by tweaking your colors just slightly. And that's at a very basic level. You can get far more complex than this. Speaking of complexity, let's talk about LUTs, which let's say that you're looking at this color grade and you're saying, this isn't extreme enough. I want extreme color grading. And you're like, I also don't want to do a lot of work. Well, I have good news for you. There are LUTs, which are lookup tables that manipulate the colors in your image that people have already made. And there's a lot of packs out there. You can buy them. You can get some of them for free. I'm gonna be showing you one that I use for free today, and I'm really happy with how it looks. So we're gonna go over here to our clip. We're gonna go to effect controls, and for Lumetri color, we're going to delete that completely, which now resets all of our Lumetri color back to nothing. So we have a flat log image as we started with, and we are now ready to add a LUT to it, which it should be the first step whenever you are color grading with a LUT. The LUT that I wanna to use today is called Sedona, and it is a free LUT offered by IWLTBAP, which is a cool website that has a ton of LUTs if you wanna check them out. I will link to it down in the description of this video if you wanna download this LUT for yourself and use it. But for me now, I've already downloaded the LUT and it is ready to be imported into my project. So I'm gonna go over here to the Creative tab, which is the main tab that you use whenever you are importing and using LUTs. I'm going to click the Look drop-down menu and I'm gonna click Browse, which is gonna bring up the File menu for my LUTs. And for clarification here, here is the folder that I downloaded, IWLTBAP, Sedona Free LUT. I'm gonna open that. Then I'm going to go to LUTs by IWLTBAP Cube. And then I'm going to go and click on the IWLTBAP Sedona Log Cube because this is the cube format of the LUT that is made to be used with a log format such as D-Log. It is in the cube format, which is readable by Adobe Premiere. So we're going to click open and immediately our image changes. Look at that. That is so cool. It is immediately taken and removed a lot of the greens. We're getting a very strong reddish orange and bluish teal color immediately, which is honestly the Hollywood blockbuster look as they call it. If I go over here and turn it off, you can see the extreme difference that we're going from, from nothing to a lot, which looks pretty cool, I think. I really like how this LUT looks. But that said, I feel like this LUT is a little too strong. If we go over here and look at our scopes, you'll see that shadow-wise, it is being crushed a little bit too dark in the shadows, so we're losing a lot of our shadow detail in here, and it's not nearly enough in the highlights. So let's manipulate this LUT a little bit and tweak it a bit so it works best with our footage. So first thing I'm gonna do is go over here to intensity, which is how you affect the strength of the LUT. And if I bring it down here, you'll see immediately the LUT starts fading. And if I bring it up, it immediately gets super intense and it's crazy. So honestly, for most LUTs, I find 
that I turn them down to about 70% or so. And what you'll see there is that we're immediately not getting nearly as much shadow detail loss. The shadows are still crushed nicely, but they're not too crushed. And we still have a lot of room up top. So let's go over here to our curves tab and let's bring these highlight levels back up even brighter. We're gonna click in the highlights here and we're gonna start dragging this up and that's bringing up the highlights up, 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 up to about there. I'd say looks really good. So nothing's overexposed, but suddenly things are looking a lot better. In the process, it looks like the midtones are a little too high too. So let's go ahead and bring those down a little bit too. And suddenly this is looking pretty darn cool. And now I have the freedom to adjust this a little bit more if I need to maybe we increase the intensity just a little more, bring a little bit more of that red back in, and that's looking pretty cool. If I do that though, then I gotta go over here to the curves and I need to bring up the shadows just slightly. But as you can see, it's pretty easy to manipulate the LUT and a lot of the hard work of shifting to these exact colors and modifying things is already done for you. So a lot of color grading with a LUT is finding a LUT that has a color that you like and then manipulating the levels just a little bit as you go until they look good. For me though, I think this is looking really great if I want a more extreme color grade. This is showing me more of the stark intensity of Iceland. It's a little more cold. You're not getting that color from the greens that you were getting whenever we color corrected normally. If you go over here, the metric color, if we turn it off, I was getting a lot more green over here from this moss and from down here in the grassland, but this LUT has removed a lot of those greens and shifted them to the yellows and the reds. This is more of a two note LUT. You're getting blues and you're getting oranges, but I think it looks really good. And as an example here, I'm going to go over here and let you see how it looks color graded. And here is how it looked color corrected. As you can see, that is a pretty large difference in feeling and tone and emotion just from these two looks here. It looks pretty darn cool though. And I feel like either of these are good looks depending on what you're wanting to do with your footage and with your story. That's it. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this video has been helpful to you and given you some great insight into how to color correct and color grade your Mavic Pro footage. Speaking of the Mavic Pro, I have a ton of other videos on my channel all about the Mavic and drones in general if you want to check it out. I recently got back from a trip to Iceland and filmed some amazing, beautiful drone shots of that that I would love for you to check out. I also filmed a video about how to pass the FAA's Part 107 drone knowledge test that you will need if you want to fly your drone commercially. So I will link to both of those in the corner and down the the description of this video if you want to check those out. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave one below or get in touch with me through my website, whoismat.com. It is also a massive help to me if you would consider liking this video and subscribing if you want to see more videos like this about drones or about any other aspect of filmmaking in the future. In addition, I've also been posting a ton of behind the scenes stuff to my Instagram and my Facebook pages. So if you want to check those out and follow me, you can at instagram.com slash whoismat and I will link to my Facebook page down in the description of this video. Last two things, I'm also offering personal one-on-one -on -one filmmaker consulting. So if you want to talk to me about anything that we've talked about in this video, color grading, color correction, anything like that, I would love to talk to you and you can check that out at whoismat.com slash consulting. And lastly, you can check out my wedding film production company, Filmstrong Productions at filmstrong.com. Thanks so much and have a great day.